Don't get it tangled. Oh, we are up no, top. No, you're okay. Go ahead. No, I'm talking about up top. No, you're okay. Just watch it. Don't let it get loose. Whoa! <clears throat> Grady White Boat's reputation for designing ruggedly elegant fishing boats is legendary. Our attention to quality, detail, and customer service is unmatched. From our Fisherman 180 and Coastal Explorer series to the unrivaled Canyon 456, you'll find no boat that rides better and offers more fishing amenities. Go ahead, experience fishing at its best. Get the Grady. Hello, welcome to the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Well, today's program is about our blue water adventure. Some great fishing, but also we tried to do some research that day, Joe. That's right. This is kind of a continuation of what we did several years ago. Don Hammond uh, came up from uh, Charleston, South Carolina to be with us again, trying to put some satellite tags in, uh, in some Gafford-sized dolphins, some large dolphin, 25 to 30 pound class dolphin. Uh, Grady White Boats has been a real big uh, uh, supporter of that program, trying to learn a lot more about dolphin. At the same time, we wanted to go off the the, the marlin fishing had been really good uh, in the weeks prior, so we decided to uh, take some time and, and and spend some time while we were out there uh, to to go for blue marlin, and it really paid off. We we. Uh, increase the size of our tackle and, and the size of the lures, and uh, you'll see it paid off. And when you got the double header on, the tackle was real important. We'll talk about that in gear time. Absolutely. We'll go by, back, and the guys will, will share with us how they scaled up. And, and you have to when you go in to, to, for, for larger fish out there, and, um, and it paid off. And Donald's recipe today is more of a preparation recipe. Right. right. Uh, sushi has become very popular worldwide. And, and so she's showed us a different way to prepare su sushi. Uh, I'll just say the Donald Reynolds way. All right, we got a lot going on. Let's get to it here on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Yeah. Are you still fooling with that same fish? There's nothing on there, it's just a lure. <laughs> You're just probably aggravating it to pieces. There he goes. Is that your fish? No, it's his. It's that one. Look at that dog. That's, that's the left short. Oh, we're on again. He's going all over my line. Yeah. All right. He just okay, jumped right, right over me. Pretty fish, though. All right, so we're going to try to put a uh, spaghetti tag in this fish. If he uh, looks like he's hooked. You're going to be healthy right, enough right to release. Got a small bull. All right. Okay, we got the tag right, in it. You know, you get the D hooker, we'll get him unhooked. All right. It's a good looking little bull dolphin. This plug you got really tears them up. They do not like it. Don't like it. He hit that uh, that aluminum plug, so he might be, he's probably hooked right in the mouth. Yeah, we caught a bunch on that thing the last couple days. Looks like a little silver bullet with red eyes. Yeah, I think so, Don. Okay. I think he's gonna be uh, hooked in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Bump the boat and gear, be good. All right. Come on. One more good pump. Hang on, one more down. And up. There you go. The 
Let me get him laid down right there beside the bed. Got a tag in him right as he threw the hook. Good job. <laughs> All right. This fish ain't really run much. He's not as little as y'all making him out to be. I'm sorry. All right. Do we have another belt other than the one in the cabin? Don, have you gotten a good look at him yet? I thought that was our fish. Nice work. Good job. You guys, we had a, you know, we've had a, a lot of action this morning. We were fishing in there, what, 20, 30 phantoms? That's right. Now we've moved right. out to 90 phantoms and moving out to deep water. We pulled the, the naturals and the, the combinations, uh, natural baits and lures that we've been pulling earlier in, and we're gonna put out some, some big artificial. Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we've got? We're gonna put some plastic out, speed up the face a little bit, cover some ground, see if we can find some larger dolphin, and uh, hopefully a blue one will come along. Yeah. The man in the blue suit would be good to see today. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, okay, well, let's get some baits out, guys. I'm going to put this in the ice box. We're going to use your lucky plug again? Yeah, we'll, we'll just set that down for right now. We'll get these out. You coming across? Yeah, just set that in that rod holder over there. Short hooks there, stiff rig. <laughs> so you've heard this morning on the radio T that they've been catching some billfish out here? Yeah, a couple blue ones this morning. Good. Yeah. That's always good to hear. All right, we got a double. I don't know what we got here. This fish is going, boy. Oh, it's a, oh man, I see a bill. Can we go under me? There he is, oh man. Got a blue on, got him on. I got, I'm hooked up too. Oh, we got a double. <laughs> Unreal, can I get a, look at mine back there. Good oh, Lord. look at him, look at him. This is just too cool. <laughs> All right, we got to pay attention here. That's my fish in the air. All right. All right. I need somebody at the helm. Okay. All right, Don, put the can. Look at him jumping. God <laughs> knows. Man, that was quick. We barely got the baits out. I know. That was we a got good, a double. Good call moving out to this deeper water. <laughs> really good call. Mine was up on top for the first 45 seconds, and now he's gone down. Mine's just, he's still pulling line. Oh, man. That was incredible, though. We barely had the baits in the water, and you we guys decided to make of, that move. We had three baits boom. in the water. We didn't even get the fourth artificial out. <laughs> Had two of them hit. Everybody. We're not gonna have to go to the gym for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to move. This thing is really pulling. That was just spectacular. Right. Both of them. And that my fish is just jumping on the He did, he did a acrobatic show for us. No right, doubt. Jim, where are you? I'm out here. Out. I am. He is. I'm getting it back little by little, and I know he ain't done. I think if they knew we were gonna let him go, they'd come on up peacefully. <laughs> Crank it, we're going down. Put her in low gear, here. Winch up. I don't know if he's resting, but I need one. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> How good is that, T? How good is this? Does it get any better? Come out and tag a couple dolphins, put a couple in the fish, fish box, decide, let's go deep and try to catch them on. We get three baits in the water, and before we get the fourth one out, we got a double hookup, a blue marlin. Come on, get tight on them. Not helping me. Right, right. I pulled mine. Come on. I think. Uh, yep. All right. Get in here. I, right. I pulled the hooks on mine. We'll clear the line and we can back down and get Kirsten. Get a release. Man, that was a nice fish. He jumped tremendously. All right. She's clear. Man, my arms are telling me I've been on the blue marlin. See, do you see anything? Or you see sea lion. Still got a little yeah. bit of go. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting close though, Kurt. You're looking good. You got a line, line back on it. All right. Pump him and reel down on him, Kurt. Pump up, reel down. Don't drop the rod tip without reeling, buddy. All right, there I'm you trying. Go. You got a reel to get line. That's it. Pump up, reel down on them. Real hard when you drop that rod tip. You start down with that rod tip. Real like that. Right. Pull right. up easy, come down easy. I'm adjusting nice my and belt. Smooth. Come on, buddy. Just pump him up slow, Kurt, nice and smooth. Now get your hand on that reel and reel down on him. There you go. Now let that line stack up. I'll try not to. It's like we're getting one or two inches at a time. He's tug of war. He looks like he's coming up now. That's yeah, good. He's getting a better angle. He is here. Reel down on him. Fight him hard. Come on, don't let up on him. Put the pressure on him. Get that leader up. Let's get a release. And when I touch that leader, you back that drag off halfway. Pump him up. You got him. He's inching now. I'm fighting for feet. There he is. All right, we got a legal release. Back off that drag halfway. Watch your rod tip. Don't get it tangled. Oh, we are up no, top. No, you're okay. Go ahead. No, I'm talking about up top. No, you're okay. Just watch it. Don't let it get loose. Whoa! Apply the drag and back off. Tighten the drag. I didn't back off much though. Kurt, you got the drag back down, right? Yeah, I got the drag what back you down. You got him. Nice little blue. Man, is he pretty or what? <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, guys, can you get the hook out of him? All right, got a release. How's he looking? That's her. She's green as good. All right. Oh, All right, guys. Way to go, guys. Good job, good job bud. Good show. That was hey, my water filter. That? Three lures in the water. Get two hookups. We pulled the hooks on one pretty quick. Thank goodness, all the hassle. But uh, nice, nice blue marlin, man. Two blues with three lures in the water. Man, That's what's incredible. the chances of that? That's incredible. That you guys incredible. are great. I really now, appreciate this. That's good North Carolina, late May, early June fishing at its best. Heck yeah. yeah. No doubt. Joe, truly. A blue water adventure. Absolutely, it turned out uh, to be that. I mean, catching dolphins is a lot of fun, but when you have a double hookup with blue marlin, uh, within minutes of putting your baits out, like we did, and in, in, in those sea conditions, like we had, uh, for me, as far as filming it, was was just real special. And uh, the guys were, you know, fought the fish and stand up tackle, which is a whole different ball game than sitting in a chair with a gimbal, um, and they'll tell you that. Um, Kurt, still Kurt, about he's that. still talking about it, and and rightfully so. He he that was a, that was a catch of a lifetime, and he's ready to go back out and do it again. Um, but uh, what an adventure! Yeah. Speaking of adventure, let's go find out more about the tackle. Let's go to gear time.
Kurt, I was, I was thinking we had a really good day today, but then I decided it was great. I mean, how often you go offshore, catch some dolphin, tag some dolphin. Saw a couple blue marlin hookups. Uh, I mean, we headed, we headed out. We stopped in about 120, 130 feet of water. We fished for dolphin, uh, trying to get one to put a satellite tag in. We couldn't find him, but we did put a few spaghetti tags in some fish. Threw a few in the box. Uh, this is one of the lures we're using. It's just an islander. Uh, we were rigging it with bahu. We were also swimming naked bahus. Uh, another bait we use is this uh, machined aluminum cedar plug. Basically, it's just made out of aluminum. It's been really effective with you know the three or four years I've been fishing. I've done real well with dolphin on that plug. Um, you know, we caught those dolphin and tagged some, and then we headed offshore. We picked up and, and ran out to the Hunter Phantom line, and it was a beautiful day weather-wise. I mean, it was just great, and um, we were able to go out there and, and we were putting, we, we decided to fish artificials for blue marlin, and, uh, and lo and behold, we got two baits in the water, putting a third out, and, and had uh, a blue hit this one, a 200-pound class fish, and then we had a second, so we had a double header, and, we fought those fish for quite a while before I pulled the hooks on the one I had on, and then you uh, managed to get yours in and release it. It was a, it was an unbelievable experience. I'd never uh, I've never caught a um, blue marlin before, and um, standing up doing it with this uh, what do you call this the uh, fighting belt the fighting belt this thing really helped, um, and it was a heck of a fight. And this, and that last five or six minutes, every few inches were hard to come by because uh, that was one tough fish. And it was one incredibly beautiful fish when we got it upside the boat. Yeah, it gives you a lot of respect for the resource. It's important to, to try to release those fish and uh, enjoy them and leave them there for the future. And mm -hmm. it's great to be able to hook up to a couple 200 pound plus marlins at the same time. It's yeah. quite a Chinese fire drill, but <laughs> I really thoroughly enjoyed it and I've had a great time today. Oh, I did too. I, I uh, One of the best offshore trips I've ever been, probably the best offshore trip I have ever been on in my life. And I really do appreciate it. But we need to do it again sometime. We will, we okay. will. Well, as always, we hope you can use that valuable information. Now, Donna is preparing in the kitchen for sushi. Let's catch up with Donna in the kitchen on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Today in the kitchen we're doing something a little bit different. We are going to make sushi. Um, we've had lots of requests for this so we decided we would do a show on sushi and when I was doing some research on it I always thought you had to roll your sushi and that kind of made me a little nervous but then I did some research and we can do a pressed sushi which a lot of Japanese housewives do so that's what we're going to be doing here in the kitchen it is quick and easy and your kids can do it with you I had some friends kids who helped me with mine and they had a blast so let's go ahead and get started first of all we're going to need to buy some sushi rice and you can buy that in the grocery in a package and it specifically says sushi rice on it follow the package directions and make your rice this is what it looks like once it's cooked it's really a or it's also known probably as sticky rice it's a very sticky sticky rice we're going to make ours in a 9 by 13 pan. So we're going to get all of our ingredients out. We're going to make sure it's the freshest that we can find. We um, are going to do some salmon, some tuna, and then we also have some asparagus. We have some cucumbers, which I had um, used a vegetable peeler or my friend's children uses, used the vegetable peeler and just peeled it off so it's nice and thin. And then we have some fresh shrimp as well that I bought in the um, seafood section that was already cooked, deveined, and peeled. How easy is that? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pan, you can use a square pan or whatever you have, and we're just going to start layering it however we like. So I love avocado, so I'm going to use some avocado in mine. I'm also going to use some of this tuna. It's called um, yellowfin tuna, or you, it'll say sushi grade tuna. So we're just going to make some slices in our tuna and place that, and you can make all kinds of different designs that you like which is kind of fun. And you can do all different types of sushi combinations in your one pan, which is nice too. And then we're gonna do some, cut some of our salmon too. And this is really beautiful salmon, this bright orange color. I'm just gonna lay that out. Maybe put a piece of asparagus in there and maybe some cucumbers. 
And the thing I found is a lot of grocery stores have sushi, so you can buy all your accompanying dishes that you need for your sushi, which is kind of nice too. Like I bought some wasabi and some pickled ginger at the store. And then all I had to do is put it on my plate, which is great. You can also um, put some shrimp in here if you want. And then what we're gonna do, once we have our um, plate all, or a pan here all decorated, then we're gonna pack on our rice. So we're gonna take our sticky rice and we're just gonna place it on top of your, your, your toppings here. And you wanna build it upside down, like you're making an upside down, a pineapple upside down cake. And then you just press it, you put it in, and then you just press it. And I had um, my friend's kids help me, and we just used some plastic baggies, and then we just pressed it down. And this way it doesn't stick to your hands, and it releases easily. And make sure your rice is warm, because it will help stick better. And you can make this in the morning, and then serve it in the afternoon or in the evening. I like to chill mine so it's nice and chilled. And you would just do this throughout your whole pan, and then you're ready. And then when you're ready to go, I just put some wax paper on top and some foil, put it in my refrigerator. And then when I was ready, I just flipped it upside down on a cutting board. And then you want to take a really sharp knife and you can either um, oil it with some olive oil or some nonstick spray because it will help cut a lot easier and won't stick to the rice. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. You can do all kinds of creations that you want. You can also form your sushi by hand if you want. I just formed some different little shapes and then you can just top it with a piece of shrimp and maybe some avocado or something that you have and you have great sushi that you've made at home. It's quick, it's easy, and it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy this and try it at home and let me know what kind of combinations you come up with. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Simple Cooking. Thanks, Donna. She's always got something good in the kitchen. Joe, I want to go back. We had good fishing that day, but I want to talk more about the research. That is so important. It really is. And, yeah, we've always advocated on this show uh, learning as much as we can about every fish that we have here in North Carolina. And, and Don just continues to do some great work in learning more and more about the dolphin fish. And, and uh, if you want to become a part of that program, uh, we'll give you a telephone number and a website. Uh, if you have a boat, a charter boat that you run, or if you, it's a pleasure boat, if you go out fishing for dolphin and want to be a part of that program, uh, tagging the fish and it's just again the more we learn about the fish uh, the better, better off we are we can set management uh, plans up for for everything and so uh, give him a call or go to his website and become a part of a, a really uh, great conservation uh, piece and nothing like that big blue water out there well I think Kurt will be talking about it for quite some time all right for Joe Albee I'm John Moore thanks for joining us today on the Carolina Outdoor Journal make sure to visit our website for more information Grady White boats are known for uncompromising quality through exceptional attention to detail. On every model, from 18 to 45 feet, we incorporate exclusive features and quality components that you won't find on any other boat brands. Our exclusive CV2 hull design is ranked highest in every third-party survey done in the marine industry, so every day on the water will be a great day, no matter the conditions. Ask any Grady White owner and they'll tell you, get the Grady.